Welcome to the Reality Revolution. Today's episode is to outline a way to freedom. It is your birthright to be free. But we are all prisoners of our egos and the world around us. But there is a way to freedom and I want to help get you there. A life of freedom is possible for you. You can awaken this instant and live as love itself. Imagine for a moment that you're living in the time of slavery in the United States. Imagine what it would be like to be born a slave. Imagine that your parents were born slaves and their parents as well. Now imagine for a moment that not only are you a slave, but also that your personal bondage, as well as slavery in general, is going to go on forever, for every life. This is just the way of the world. This is what you were born into. You are told what to do. You can be sold or traded at any time. You can be beaten. You can be used in any way. If you're lucky, You get to work inside the house or for kind people. If you aren't so lucky, you have to work out in the fields or for unkind people. This is your life. This is just the way it always has been and always will be. As a slave, you've probably never been more than 50 miles away from your birthplace. Maybe you've been to another town, but maybe not. There are no televisions, no radios, no newspapers. You most likely can't read or write anyway. You don't know any other life except a slave's life. Since your parents and grandparents weren't allowed to speak your native tongue, you don't have a cultural past. You may still hear the call of the drum and the secret beat of old tribal songs that refuse to die, but you don't have a memory of being free. And there's nothing around you that points to even the remotest possibility of your freedom. It seems preordained that you and your descendants will live and die as slaves. These are the parameters of your universe. Within these parameters, you may be allowed to marry or not, have children or not, work in the house or the field, live here or there. But all of those circumstances appear against the background of slavery. Then one day, you hear a whisper. There is a freedom train coming. You may not even know what these words mean. Some of your friends may hear the news of freedom and dismiss it out of hand as the mad ravings of crazy people. Others may hear the news and say, well, I got a pretty good life here. I live in the master's house. I eat good food. I don't need a freedom train. They are content with the way things are. Other people, even those who aren't content with slave's life might be far too frightened to want or even know about a freedom train because if they attempt to escape, they know the dogs will be sent after them. If they're captured, they fear they will be whipped, tortured, and perhaps even killed to set an example so that no one else runs away. Those who are too frightened to risk these dangers may say, don't tell me about a freedom train. I don't want that. This is good enough. Others may worry, how would I eat if I were free? Where would I live? What would I do if freedom took me to a strange new land? Here I know where I belong. I know where my food comes from. How would I know what to do there? How would I know what to say? How would I know how to act? They're terrified of leaving the known and even more terrified of the imagined unknown. Some may cry, I'd like to go, but my children are here. They can't go. I have to stay here with my children. Others may mourn. I'd like to go, but I can't leave because I'm so in love and my lover can't possibly go. They are terrified of losing the relationship that keeps them attached. But if you hear the whisper, freedom, and it's the most important news they've ever heard, they're willing to take the risk to be free no matter what it takes. Accepting the call of the freedom train is not easy. Once you hear the whisper, You're beckoned to put yourself in grave danger just to discover more. You go to secret meetings because you need directions to find this freedom. The instructions on what to do when you get there. 
you have to be very careful because you're always being watched, but still, you long to know more. It's a life or death situation. You are no longer willing to live in slavery. Since you've never been 50 miles from home, you don't know the way to freedom. You don't know anything about it. You have to be willing to go alone through the swamp and the woods. Leave everything behind if that's what it takes. If you carry too much baggage with you, you won't make it. You'll sink under the load. So alone and with few possessions, you put yourself on the line and face the unknown. This is the test of fire. If you can't bear another moment of slavery, regardless of the cost, regardless of the risk, you heed the instructions, follow the trail, and find your way to the freedom train. This is the end of identification as a slave and the beginning of a life of freedom. First, you hear the whisper. This whisper lets you know that it is possible to escape from slavery. Some people can't bear anything more than simply to hear about this possibility. Just to hear this good news, that freedom is possible, is enough. It may take years or lifetimes before they're ready for the next step, but at least now they know it's possible. I'm not talking about slavery that happened back then. I'm talking about slavery of your soul. This is the first function of the awakening process, the announcement of the truth of freedom. Freedom of your ego, freedom to create your reality, freedom to have the power to do what you want. Sometimes you have to hear it over and over again. When you've heard that freedom is possible enough times and this possibility sinks in fully, eventually you fall deeply in love and attaining freedom becomes the very purpose of your being. Second, the consciousness and the principles that I talk about on this podcast are the map, the path, and the way to find the freedom train. I try to provide the direction to follow, and I warn of the traps and the pitfalls along the way. I try to point out the confirming signs as well as the dangers of getting lost. I try to show you your current location, Describe the ultimate destination and point out the quickest route for getting there. The process of consciousness in which you meditate, regulate your thoughts and begin to create your reality is the freedom train itself. It is the end of your burden. Once you're on the train, you don't have to carry your luggage on your head. You can put it on the rack and sit down. You can stop everything and let this train carry you. You can put down the burden of slavery and surrender to the grace that carries you home. That is our destination. It is home. It is freedom. It is where you arrive when you are free to do whatever you want, whenever you want, using only the power of your mind. How long does it take to arrive? It depends on how far you've wandered away from yourself. Eventually, when you arrive, you laugh at the deep realization But there never was a leaving. It was all in your mind. You sold yourself into the slavery in your mind by falling into your past, falling into negative thoughts, and not believing in the power to create reality. That you never really went anywhere, how long can it possibly take to return? In my experience, this freedom, this sweetness of coming home, is your own heart speaking to you in silence. It is nourishing, sweet and true, this sweet silence. It comes and carries you home once you open yourself up to your heart. Your heart is the mirror in which you see yourself, in which you see at last who you are and who you're not. When you know who you are, you realize the great benefit of stopping your false identification as a slave to the world. True freedom is being yourself. This process of awakening and manifesting your reality reveals the truth of yourself and the way back to a natural life free from the slave identity. When you look back from the shore of freedom, you see you were not who you thought you were. Who you thought you were didn't transform into something else. It never was. It was all just a nightmare of slavery passed on for generations from your culture, from your society, from your family, a nightmare of the ego separation and alienation and the loss of love, which is ended as suddenly as awakening from a dream. In this awakening, 
you can accept and love life as it is. Looking back at a dream from awakened consciousness, you see the perfection of even the dream. You see the non-separation in the appearance. You realize yourself as the living truth of immortal love. That is when life begins. So the question is, what do you really want? If you can isolate the answer to this question, you can find your freedom. In any life, essential questions emerge that demand answers. The answers determine the course of your life for good or for ill. Now I oppose the essential question to you. What do you really want? Surprisingly, most people have never asked themselves this question with any depth. Indeed, most people live their entire lives without really questioning what it is they truly want. Most just make do with whatever shows up. Most are content to settle for some version, hopefully a little bit better, of what their parents had or wanted. Others may rebel and strive for something totally different from what their parents had, but end up with the same results. Many people who choose to become parents say that what they most want is not to treat their children the way their parents treated them. I can appreciate that. All the choices that exist are in the realm of relative slavery. There are not true choices, but conditioned responses. When we are acting out of conditioning, all of our choices are rooted in a ground of ignorance. Unless you know who you are, all of your choices remain the choices of a slave. Of course, slaves sometimes protest that they are in fact free and can do whatever they please. Except be still. Slaves do not have the power of silence. Silence is the key that unlocks all the chains of slavery. All slaves are bound to the noise of a rising phenomenon. In using the term slaves, I'm including the roles of both master and slave. Since all roles in this world are roles of relative slavery. The apparent master is as enslaved as the apparent slave. Both are addicted to sensory experience and to the voices of their ego minds talking in their heads. There is a river of thought waves and all beings are being washed downstream by this river. Some rationalize that they are going with the flow. Others zigzag and imagine that they are in control while still others gather objects and people around them so they can float down the river together. The rarest of the rare are those who give rise to the desire for freedom. Freedom is the willingness to take a stand exactly where you are in the middle of the mind stream. The desire for freedom cannot be contained. It cannot be moderated. It cannot be tailored to the expectations of others. When those who are washing by in the stream cry out that you are lost, that you are falling behind as they rush ahead, great temptations surface that urge you to turn away from your true self and swim back into the mainstream. But the desire for freedom is not a casual affair. It is the culmination of the spiritual path. It is the end of the search. It is the end of life as you knew it, so you do not waver. If you looked at me and said you wanted freedom, I would look you in the eyes and say if your hair were on fire and you were rushing to the river and you passed some friends who called out to you to sit and join them for a cup of coffee, would you stop? Would you even take time to answer? No, you'd keep on heading straight for the river. That is the desire for freedom. There is no time to sit and think. Imagine yourself and see what is on your own personal list of what you want. For most people on the path, the list goes something like, sure, I want to be free, but I also want to be successful. I want to have money. I want my parents to love me. I want to have great sex. None of these desires is bad in and of itself. Is simply not the way to find true freedom and happiness. Ask yourself honestly, has changing your circumstances, changing your partner, or having more ever led you to lasting peace and true fulfillment? If you still believe that changing something in your life will make you happy, you aren't yet ready to find true happiness and freedom. But perhaps someday, when you have exhausted all of your attempts to fulfill fantasies, you will finally be disillusioned enough with the world to look somewhere else, a faster, more direct way to experience freedom and happiness is to go through your list of preferences and desires right now and see that none of them are ultimately fulfilling because they are all desires of the slave. When you're ripe 
then you're left with one single desire, the desire for freedom. This desire turns into a blazing fire because it is the only desire. It takes hold of you. This burning desire for freedom is like a funeral pyre. It burns all of the elements that made up your false identity as a slave. Then everything is revealed. You fall into a realization of yourself that is beyond your wildest dreams. The depth and the duration of your experience in this vast realm of realization depends on the intensity of your desire. The more you surrender, the deeper it takes you and the longer it lasts. This is like samadhi mentioned in Buddhist texts. It disappears as all experiences come and go, but you are left with a certainty that is revealed through the experience, yet is beyond experience. At some point, everything that you turned away from comes back to test you. If you don't touch the temptations, they too burn in freedom's fire and your realization goes even deeper. Again, I ask you this question. What do you really want? I repeat this question because you can accomplish nothing of real consequence until you answer this question on the deepest level. Once you answer this question, a radical reappraisal of your life may point you in a completely new direction. Most people's lives are dedicated to getting what they think they want. The problem is that most people don't know what they really want. Most people live in the unconditioned wants of family and in the manufactured wants of society and pendulums with their subconscious fantasies projected onto the world. In this way, they spend their lives invested in false wants and desires. Most people only know how to define what they want by what they already have and what they don't have by what they want to fix or get rid of or by what they want to keep or increase. All of this, including all relationships, belong to the realm of objects, but ownership of these objects is only the projection of the ego mind. This ego mind, which tells a story to itself about who it is, feels separate, alone, and cut off. Caught in the habit of misidentification and suffering, it is desperate to defend its space. People caught in the ego trap constantly avoid what they really want. But so long as there is an experience of separation, there's a correspondingly deep and true longing for union. So long as there is a fear and a sense of isolation, there's a deep and true longing to return home. My counsel is to tell the truth about where you have turned away from the longing for union so that you can find time for the deep and true call of your heart. Until you allow all the self-betrayals to be unveiled in the light, you subconsciously sabotage what you really want. By self-betrayal, I mean every place where you have sold out or settled for something less than the deepest truth of your heart. Be willing to stay true to your deepest longing for truth. In the face of all the subconscious pulls that arise from the ocean of mind as thought waves trying to wash you back into the desires of the subconscious. In the end, the desire for freedom transcends all other desires. It is the only true desire for a human life. It is the signature that you can feel in your body that you can manifest easily. You can imagine freedom. Being aware of having this desire in the past was very rare, but humanity is now entering a new stage. Either we evolve quickly or we will destroy the earth. The choice is ours. Now is the time for ordinary people to wake up. There's no need to be a great saint simply because you're alive and intelligent enough to listen to this. You're ready for the next evolutionary leap from the isolated selfishness that is destroying the world to the bliss of union which holds the healing of the earth and a new earth beyond. Perhaps the only hope for the planet lies in our willingness to end this personal suffering until the desire for truth and freedom and love arises in a life everything is pointless life is all about me and my story of reality i only wish to serve myself once the desire for freedom arises it becomes the central axis the ground of being that life revolves around this is the beginning of the end it signals the end of the search and the birth of realization and the reality that you choose to create.
Awakening is the end of wanting and the beginning of discovering. When you're caught in the enslavement of egoic identification, you're convinced that there is both a me and a world and that you have to do something to manifest the good and keep away the bad. This me seems to be the ground of your being. This me has good times and this me has bad times. You would like to hold on to the good times and get rid of the bad times. As you mature, you realize that good times always come to an end. Short-lived pleasures inevitably carry the aftertaste of long-term suffering. Think about it. In examining the joys of the past, can you say that your joy ever lasted? And anything you ever enjoyed, has your joy ever really been enough for you to say that you're fulfilled and need nothing more? Circumstances change, and when they do, you lose the emotions and states that were caused by those circumstances. Loved ones die, jobs change, money comes and goes, and with the flow of circumstances, your mind is lifted up and crashed down over and over again. Every ego wants to keep the highs and get rid of the lows. But wisdom lies in seeing that you never find true fulfillment, joy, and happiness this way. Causeless joy is unconditional. It is not determined by the ebb and flow of circumstances. Recognizing this is one of the hallmarks of spiritual maturity and freedom. Once you realize the nature of your suffering and the possibility of freedom, you become willing to turn away from every idea of who you think you are to find the truth. In this truth, you discover the joy that does not fade or changes with circumstances. For most people, ignorance is bliss. Most are content to have as much pleasure and as little pain as possible. What they're really expressing is the desire to extinguish self-consciousness and return to the life of an animal. This is the desire to pull the covers over your head and try to sleep, ignoring the monster that is in the room with you. But for the spiritually mature, those who are ripe with the readiness to realize the real and the true, this avoidance no longer works. To the degree that you are mature and ready to end your suffering, to that degree you become aware of your deep and genuine longing for home. We live in crazy times. No matter how difficult it may have been in the past to realize the original self, now is the time. No matter where you come from, whether you lead a holy life or not, it is possible for you, right now, to wake up. Be willing to let go of everything you think you know just for one moment. For one moment, be still. In this moment, space and time open. This opening is your chance to find the answer to the question, who am I? I'm here to tell you that if you chose to listen to this episode, if you found your way to these words, you are ready to know the answer to the essential question of your heart. You entered this collective dream with one purpose and one purpose only, to wake up and realize the truth of the situation, that you are formless, timeless, immortal love and that you're already home. I'm not asking you to go out into the wilderness and give up all material comforts. I'm not doing that. What you'll find is when you enter into this joy and bliss and you release these things that you desire that really are not the things you truly want, that you're able to facilitate, manifest, and create any reality that you want freely that is the secret to instantaneous manifestation. It is when that you have separated yourself from your ego and that you are in that unity mindset. And once you have that, you're in the flow of true freedom. You'll be taken care of perfectly. It is this place where the freedom truly exists. So if I seem mysterious, let me get to the crux of this. I teach that thoughts create reality, that you can change and control the reality around you by the nature of your thoughts and your imagination. And when we simply let the world define the reality around us, our reality becomes defined by our culture, by our society, by the world around us. Our family creates our reality. 
and we are never truly free. We are locked into the program, the algorithm, the simulation, the world that we have to live within. And if you truly want freedom, then you begin to step back and monitor your thoughts and become aware of what you're thinking and how you're creating your reality. And this process will radically change your life. Thoughts strongly influence feelings and behaviors. By understanding and changing negative thought patterns, you can experience emotional relief and behave more effectively. And this gives you psychological freedom. It frees you on a philosophical level. Achieving a deeper, more nuanced understanding of reality through thought will free you from misconceptions and erroneous beliefs and allow for a richer, more meaningful existence, your true home. It can give you spiritual freedom. Our internal states, thoughts, and beliefs have a profound impact on our experience of reality and achieving spiritual insight, enlightenment, or deeper connection with the divine or the universe can be seen as a form of ultimate freedom, liberating the individual from suffering and ignorance. On a practical level, having a positive mindset, setting clear attainable goals can help you shape your reality, make informed choices, and you'll live more fulfilling life. You can do this by gaining mastery over your thoughts. This will lead to an empowerment and self-realization allowing for a deep understanding of yourself and your capabilities. I chose to talk about freedom because that was the one definable thing that I've experienced when I truly understood this power, applied it, and experienced it in my life. It is a freedom that goes beyond all desires. I realized that I had been stuck in a world where I was imprisoned by the society that I lived within and meaningless desires, unimportant things. The more I became aware of the power of love in my life, I was truly free. When I applied this power of love in helping other people and applying my thoughts as a way of changing the world, I was truly free. I had found my home and this home was important to me important enough that I want you to have that freedom. And I looked back on my life and I realized that I had been a slave my entire life, a slave to the simulation, a slave to the world that I was in. I was a slave to my past. My past was constantly creating my reality. I was a slave to the opinions and impressions of others. I constantly was worried about what other people thought. I was a slave to my material desires. I needed to have that better car or that better house. For what reason, I didn't know. When I was able to go within and utilize these techniques and see an out expressing of my thoughts actually creating reality, then I found true freedom. You can create realities and still not be free. If you're creating realities where your ego is empowering you, but if you can separate yourself from your ego and move beyond your limited small self to the larger self of who you are, you become aware of the unity of all things. You become aware that you are one with all the people around you. And then when you use your powers of reality creation, you can change their lives too. And there is nothing that can limit you. That is true freedom. There is nothing that can limit me in this world. Now that I am aware of this power, this power gives me the ability to travel wherever I want, to meet whoever I want, to do whatever I want, when I want, however I want, in what, whatever way I want. Now, if I had that ability and power without going through the spiritual realization that I had gone through of understanding my small egoic self in relation to my larger true self, then I would still be a slave, even with this power. And there are thousands of people in the world that are slaves to their desires and are empowered. They can create realities, but they're still slaves. You can have this ability and once you are able to create realities and you use it with love and you enter into a true understanding of love, letting go of the small self and the ego 
and entering into a union with your larger self and the world around you, and you're truly free. I've tried for 30 minutes to describe this and I can't because truly the freedom that you want is only going to be experienced by you. And at some point in the future, you're going to be aware of this freedom and you're going to be, oh yeah, that's what Brian was talking about. It's this freedom. Once you have gone beyond the separation of the ego from the true self and you're aware of your power and you can see the effect of the power of love in the world around you, then you are home and you have found the way to freedom. You are free to do what you want when you want right now in this moment. If you can come to this awareness, that's all it takes. That's what's so frustrating is that people I talk to that are suffering are one second away from true freedom. One second away. It's simply becoming aware of their true power. Of course, this takes time. For some, it takes many, many lifetimes to come to a grip with. And I'm still learning. But I want it for you so bad. I want you to feel that freedom, to taste that freedom. For you no longer to be a slave of the senses in the world that you're in and to be truly free to do what you want when you want. To choose love. To find the love in the moment and be an agent of love. Love frees. Love is perfect. Love is the release. That is the way to freedom. As Neville Goddard explains, you will ask for anything and you will realize it. That is the purpose of the entire scheme. That you will not be a slave of anything in this world, not be afraid of anything. For you'll know you are one with the creator of the universe and that you can ask and expect instantaneous return as far as the answer goes. That is the way to freedom. You can find all episodes of The Reality Revolution at www.therealityrevolution.com I'd love it if you checked out my art. You can find it at www.newearth.art And welcome to the reality revolution. Mm -hmm.